Wow, what a handsome couple. <laughs> uh, first of all, maybe you can tell me your name, Laurie. I'm Laurie Porto Carrero, and I'm playing Maria in the mystery dramas. There we go. Okay, and here we go. With I'm Patrick Nielsen, and I'm playing Strader in the mystery dramas. Wow, what a challenge. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> what a, a lot of challenge and a lot of fun. Yeah. So maybe what we can do first is um, a little bit about just uh, how you kind of met first, because is it just through the drama or? It was through yes. the drama. It, I mean, the drama is the the entire context. Yeah, of, it's of, the of, it's the whole context and form of this meeting, very much, and what has developed into a very life-size friendship. Um, but it did start in a rehearsal for the first drama. I think we were up on the stage of Threefold Auditorium, and we were playing the the moment uh it was at the rehearsal and you know came and sauntered down and sat in one of the chairs and barbara reynolds barbara, barbara reynolds, reynolds yeah, uh, who uh, is directing the mystery drama yes. exactly the driving <laughs> force behind the multifaceted uh project that manifests as the mystery dramas. Um, I mean, she's really is a gatherer of people. I know. Um, and, and she said, Oh, meet Lordy Porter Carrera. She's playing Maria. And I turned around and two rows back behind me was this, you know, person with a very, very, I don't know, very leisurely kind of <laughs> <laughs> laid back, very kind of a uh, uh, position. And we, and we just had like an instant Recognition. Recognition. Oh, I know you. Yes. Yeah. It was one of those that I think three different speakers have now spoken about. Mm -hmm. Signe Schaefer, especially just now. These moments mm -hmm. of, I know you. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, there's some history that isn't on this part of the earth that plane is right. or something. Yeah. 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 And then we played on the stage. And you went up on the stage. And you were trying, and you were, you know, I think feeling your way into it because you didn't really know a lot of people, right? Mm, yes, not in the cast. Yeah. I knew a handful of people in Spring Valley from different smaller projects, but I didn't know the others in the cast. I had never played Maria before and was very excited and very daunted. And you were also stepping into kind of an ass a, a leadership, pos a leadership position and not really quite certain about yourself. Yeah. <laughs> And I remember we were throwing beanbag balls. Yeah. That's my right. strong memory. So you were up there and you had them and you were kind of just kind of playing with yourself. <laughs> and so and I, you, know, you know about Schiller and Spieltrieb, which means, you know, uh, Friedrich Schiller, the German poet, that sort of Spiel, play. Goethe, Goethe. Yeah, so it is the, the, the drive to play. You know, we, I mean, how it's do we get strong. anything new? You find it because you're playing with something. Right. There you go. You know, so, uh, yeah. Patrick came up on the stage and we were throwing to each other as one of the sort of warming up drama exercises. Yeah, yeah. That was our introduction because we didn't really talk. No. It was just, it was just the ball. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 There This you go. giving and receiving and passing and playing. And that was the beginning. And that was five years ago. Yeah. And every year, both of us have come back. And of course, um, uh, Barbara Reynolds has been working with the mystery plays since in the, the 80s. 80s. So, so I'm going to ask her a lot about that sort of thing, though. So, so I, I think what we're going to do first, uh, focus on you, perhaps, first, uh, uh, telling me a little bit <clears throat> how you actually found your passion in life and how did Androposophy get into that? Because, uh, you know, that's a mystery. How does that happen? In other words, as a child and, and growing up, where are their kind of turning points? I was born to a mother from Ohio, but a father from Latin American heritage. 
Porto Carrero. Porto Carrero. And Porto Lauri is Maria the portal. I was missing that when and, you introduced yourself. And it is time. and it is a portal. Yes, it is door to the path. And Carrero, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Porto door gate doorway carrera used to mean well, the, anyways i mean just the r's in there i mean it really gets you going yes. so there and we go that family has been full of artists for generations uh -huh. more than any other stream more than scientist or teacher or healer or full of artists singers and dancers and dramatists, painters, writers, authors. There, I remember many moments from my childhood, some are described by my mother that I can't even remember. She said when I was two, no, not even two, our Mexican maids, where we were living in Mexico, taught me the Mexican hat dance. Oh, yes. I could barely walk. There you go. They taught me to dance. There you go. When I, as I was growing up, I used to do things like climb up on the roof of my mother's car when storm winds were blowing with a curtain and let it billow out behind me and I would recite poetry at age seven and eight and ten. And she would have to drag me off the car and bring me inside before I got struck by lightning. <laughs> Well, actually, in a car, you don't get struck by lightning. It has rubber tires. <laughs> okay. In grade school, I, I, um, I experienced myself very much as being on the outside mm. of things. I Unusual. was not popular. Mm. I, was not, I didn't fit in anywhere. Mm -hmm. I, not the jockey children or the brainy children or the straight-A children. I was a dreamer. And my stronger relationships were to the poets and the muse. When I had bad days at school and felt picked on, I would go home, lock myself in my room, and speak whole Shakespeare plays out loud. I would read the whole thing from beginning and to end. Because and you had the, the resources in the house. You must have had the book. Yes, we had the book. You see, that's not what happens in normal households. My mother was not a normal mother. Yeah, yeah. She carried the spiritual teacher stream, several generations of that as well. And so going into, all of this is to say it was there from the beginning. Mm -hmm. This passion for the word, for poetry, for the word filled with something meaningful. I was in every play I could get my hands on all the way through school, and when I eventually went to do my foundation year in Sacramento. Oh, you did that? Yes, I okay. did. Okay. Steiner College. Yes. Okay. After I had spent three years teaching Waldorf Kindergarten. Okay. I came to this. Oh, I left out something rather That's important. That's all right. You can always go back. I went to the Waldorf School in Washington D.C. Oh, okay. At age nine, I walked into the classroom where Barbara Reynolds was beginning her first day of teaching. Wow. She only taught three years before she went off to her destiny, which was speech. But those three years were the three years that I was in that class. I have chills. And mm -hmm. now the teacher and the student have come around to be the director and her Maria. Unbelievable, eh? Yeah. Talk about destiny. Somebody's planning this, you know. And assistant to the... Yes, <laughs> clearly. Yeah. That was... So these two separate seeds, one I brought in with me, it feels very much this passion for the dramatic arts and, and the art of the word. Bar and... Uh, Barbara loves to tell a story, which I will not steal from her, but make sure that you Ask invite her. Barbara about, Ask her to about tell the story, story about Laurie's oh. acting... Fifth grade. Fifth grade. Callis Athena. Don't, don't okay. tell the story. Uh, uh, I'm going <laughs> to ask Barbara. her. Ask tell Barbara. The story. <laughs> I, I will. I will. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's important. It's Barbara's story. Fifth grade. It's Barbara's story. All right. And she loves it. Okay. And the other seed was this being placed by the powers that be through a mother who was intuitive enough, intuitive, intuitive enough 
to feel where I should be. Barely had the resources to do it, but did it anyway and put me in the Washington Waldorf School. Mm -hmm. By the time I got to the Rudolf Steiner College, the question that grew very, very, very burningly for me was, but how do I bring them together? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know what was this, what was this mm -hmm. something that I had experienced in school mm -hmm. and that I kept going back to, to help in the, in the Oberu for plays, which I was in as soon as I could be in them, <laughs> playing Maria and Eve and the angels mm -hmm. and helping out in the kindergarten and then teaching kindergarten. And there was something that I thirsted for, which I was then here studying but I didn't know what it had to do with drama. And it was um, wrenching to have these two separate, strong passions. Mm -hmm. So enter two of the major players in my life, Ted Pugh and Fern Sloan. Oh, I love those two. Yes. who carry the yes. Chekhov work in this yes. country. Yes, I, I worked with both of them. No, no, only with Fern, only with Fern. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> they should be an interview Connection. somewhere along the yes, way. Yes, yes, yes. I had done a workshop with them just before I turned 21 mm. at the Rudolf Steiner Summer Institute. Mm -hmm. It was a three-week-long course. I took their course and knew that they were my teachers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm but they weren't teaching anything other than three-week-long well, courses. There was yeah, no because training. Because Fern wasn't all that healthy anymore, too. They were I performing. Don't know if, yeah. That was their, their Probably. part of time when they were doing a lot of performing, and they wanted to create a course, but it didn't exist yet. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I had to wait seven years. Ended up in Sacramento, and that was the year, at the end of that year, that I received a letter from them saying, we have a training now. Come. Okay. So with some detours, I did. And that was the place that brought together anthroposophy and the dramatic arts for me. Right. There was a day during all of our 12 hours a day of exercises that I remember stopping in my tracks and thinking, we're doing anthroposophy. Exactly. It's on our feet. We're taking our bodies with us. Totally. We are not separating, we are connecting and gathering yeah. all of ourselves with this huge, true picture of the human being. Right. This is where I'm supposed to be and this is what I need to be doing. And that is what I have striven to be doing ever since in my own workshops and in the course that I'm teaching now in Spring Valley, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. going into its fifth year, wow. to which people come from oh, all yeah. over the country. Oh yes, oh, of course. Um, and in the work with um, Walking the Dog Theater and Shakespeare Alive and the Actors Ensemble, all of these places that keep working to bring anthroposophy and the dramatic arts very closely together, and all of the dramatic arts. So the drama and eurythmy and speech, music wherever it's possible. Yeah, I remember when Walking the Dog, uh, the first performance, I saw the first performance, and, and, and the eurythmist that was there, and people, the dog and people were, some people, you know, had some trepidations about how this is done, and so, but I thought it was wonderful. Yeah. I said, we have to break out of the frame. You There's know? been a lot of breaking out of the frame. To break out yes. of the frame. You know? Yes. Yeah. This exploring into these exactly. questions of what are these yeah. arts for and yeah, exactly. who are they for? Who are they for, yeah. And they had to be done and not just watched. Yes, and not just read. Yeah, either. exactly. And because when you read, it's then, not the same. No. So tell me, when did, when did you meet Len then? Glenn Williams. I met Glenn in that workshop, three week workshop, with Ted and Fern. Okay. Going on 21. Oh, okay. He was one of the four of them from the Actors Ensemble who were there teaching and performing. So that was the first time I saw them perform. Nobo Daddy, I think, which is about Adam and Eve 
and paradise. And uh, we didn't make a very strong connection then, but over the next few years, and then during my training with Ted and Fern, we were in New York City, Glenn was there, he was working with them, he was in and out. We found our connection and realized we needed to work together. together. Yeah. It was a very deep and has become, that was 1986. Was, 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 was in, in Snake and the Beautiful Lily the first yes. part that you did together? I thought yes. so. Yes. Took yeah. us a while to I find I saw it in Ann Arbor. I saw you guys piece. in Ann Arbor. I wished I had had a camera then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that one's been going now for eight years, yeah. nine years. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. And then the Gospel of John and then Aeschylus yeah. Unbound. Yeah. yeah. So you have seen each of those two twice of those three. All of them. Mm. Lucky. Mm. Yeah. Very lucky. Yeah. So, uh, uh, but you're not a millionaire yet with all of this, are you? No. No. So, <laughs> so in other words, if somebody is trying to find their destiny, it can't really be a, a path paved with money. If making money is an equal priority to finding their passion, this may not be the way to go. No. Yeah. It hasn't been for me an equal priority. Yeah. You to somehow have to live and feed yourself, but it's not the first thing. There's a lot of trust. Yeah required yeah, yeah. Um, and feeling forward to what is the next thing and often doing other jobs as yeah. well yeah being flexible cleaning bathrooms and right working in kitchens and yeah. and you know doing child care for other families and whatever it is yeah yeah being very flexible it's great for flexibility of soul for sure <laughs> that way you learn it practically every day yes I mean, this and is it keeps the artist who has to work hand in hand with these luciferic forces which want to pull us into, I am the artist, mm -hmm. I'm above all that, mm -hmm. humble. Mm -hmm. And a little bit grounded. Yeah, because you... And you can't afford to become snobbish or superior yeah. or anything else. Yeah. So now you're doing the mystery place and maybe we'll go on to have a look over here. Say your name first again, so because uh, that might be helpful. Uh, Patrick Nielsen. Okay. I'm um, playing Strader in the mystery dramas. Okay. And, and so, so you go back to your childhood. I mean, I'm not a psychiatrist or anything like that, but <laughs> I think people might want to know <laughs> what uh, fires you up. Uh, well, you mentioned that you know, she didn't have the typical family... Mm -hmm. background experience. I think mine is more typical. Um, mm. I, I, it's, e it's easy for me to forget, but that the arts really were a big part of my family uh, in the past.